Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give a talk about the Islamic perspective, properly understood, of their Quran. Because there's misconceptions. Muslims are told every day, in and out of this park on Sundays, that there is only one Quran. Perfect. Perfectly preserved. There's only one manuscript. You won't find any others. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is a falsehood. They have been told that no matter where you go in the world, they all recite the same Quran, letter for letter, word for word, dot for dot, halakha for halakha. But we know now from certain other Da'is who have come to this park that that is not the actual story. The story itself has changed now because they've been exposed by people like Dr. Yasakadi, by other Christians, by other Muslims. What we really have now are many different Qurans which were fought about at the time of Muhammad. When Muhammad had died, there was not an understanding as to what was Quran and what wasn't Quran. Instead, this understanding evolved over time. It evolved over the 20 year period where the first recession of the Quran took place and then it happened another 20 years after by Uthman. Uthman took Quran manuscripts and he burned those that he did not use. Burn them. We don't have them today. Scholarship doesn't have them today. We don't even have Uthman's Quran today. If we don't have Uthman's Quran, we have no way of knowing what his original was and what the ones he burnt were. But Muslims will still repeat the lie that there is only one Quran. Even though their own scholars know full well that's not true. They even have terms for it. What they call variants, or what we call variants, they call Qur'at. They call it the Aruf. Which according to their traditions in Sahih al-Bukhari, it will say quite clearly that Muhammad revealed the Quran in seven different modes. But he revealed it to two people who were companions from the tribe of Quraysh, which means they wouldn't have spoke in a different dialect. They would have spoke the same way, like someone who's from Birmingham and someone's from just outside of Birmingham. They both would have spoke the same dialect. Now, what does this mean? It means that these Aruf, the seven different modes, are not just dialects. They are actual differences in words, they have differences in meanings. And we can quote you scholars to demonstrate this because scholars are starting to come out of the woodwork and they're starting to be honest about it. They're being honest about the fact that yes, there are variants. Dr. Fadel Soliman of the Bridges Foundation, who is based in Cairo in Egypt, who is an Arabic specialist in translating the Quran, he admits in his own work, his own translation of the Quran, that there's at least 10 of these. He calls his work the 10 Qur'at of the Noble Qur'an. So the cat's out of the bag. And you can find this Muslims on Qur'an.com. They actually include his translation as one of their translations. So you can read it. It's an app. It's an app. They, there was his own app that you can find, which is just called the same name as his book, the 10 Qur'at of the Holy Qur'an but he's also been included on Quran.com. So you don't even need his app. You can just go straight to Quran.com, open the translations, find Dr. Fadel Soliman, and then see it all, and he puts it in, in yellow whenever there's a difference. I think maybe he was scared to put it in red, so he put it in yellow. But there are these differences in the Qur'at. Now, here's a question for Muslims. If the Quran was revealed in different modes, the Aruf, where is that today? Because it can't be the same as the Qur'at, because there's 10 Qur'at. So unless they say someone added three later on, which is obviously going to be a corruption of the Qur'an, they have to say it's different, which means that the Aruf is a different thing from the Qur'at. So where's the Aruf? We have 10 Qur'at, where are these Aruf? The answer is, they've lost it. Now, if the Qur'an was revealed in seven different ways, and you've lost six of them, You've only got one. That's one out of seven. One out of seven is not a particularly high number. I think that's less than 
So you have less than 16% of the Quran. This is damaging to Muslims because when they talk about the Bible, they think that because variants exist in manuscripts, that it's a big gotcha. But we have known about this for hundreds of years. Our manuscript tradition is a blessing to us because we have over 5,000 manuscripts so we can be confident in what the early church was saying, what they were copying, what they were writing. But with the Quran, it's only a few, a handful, which is suspicious because at that time they owned all of Arabia. The early church didn't own all of Jerusalem and beyond. We were a persecuted minority. We were persecuted by the Romans, by the Byzantines. When, and even the Jews themselves in Jerusalem. So we had to write on dried leaves, papyrus. We had to write on papyrus that degrades over decades. But parchment, which is animal skin, they would have had access to in all of Arabia. They could have gone to the different cities in Arabia that they owned and they could have said, anyone have any parchment? <laughs> we'll write the Quran down. We'll write the Quran down and the six other ways of doing it. Had the technology, had they the had the technology, they had the power and the will, but they didn't do it. Wow. Why? Why? Why didn't they do that? Why is it today yeah. we can't go into libraries and find the seven arouf? That's a good question. Why? It's why, because why? it has been lost. Ah, Some yeah. scholars yeah. say maybe Uthman did it. Wow. So when Uthman burns different manuscripts of the Quran, yeah. he was burning the different arouf. Wow. Which is damaging because is damaging. you can't do that. Muhammad never told you to burn that roof. Exactly. He said, here is the Quran. I am revealing it from Jibril in seven different ways. And yet, where is it? We don't have it because of different circumstances. The most likely answer, I think, is that Uthman burned them. We know he burnt some manuscripts. Maybe he was burning the different Aruf. Maybe he wanted to make sure there was only one Aruf. Maybe it's because the Aruf had different words in it and people were arguing about the different words as we read in Sahih Hadith. That would make sense. But unfortunately, these options aren't available to Muslims because they can't give a good answer for it. They can't explain why their Quran has, has different manuscripts, different variants. And they can't be said to go back to Muhammad because Muhammad never told you this. Muhammad said seven aruf. He never said 10 kiraats. He never said seven kiraats. He said seven aruf. So where is it today, Muslims? I would like to look for an answer. Now let's contrast this with the Bible because what Christians believe it's not the same as what Muslims believe. Christians don't believe that our scripture fell from Jannah, that it fell from heaven, and that somehow it is purely just the work of God. Nothing else is involved. It's a kitab from Jannah. We don't believe that, whereas the Muslims do. They believe it came from Kalam Allah. It is the word of Allah from an uncreated tablet. We don't have that view. We believe that God has worked through men, through his Holy Spirit to inspire writings, to inspire authors. And through those, they are stored, they are collected, they are preserved. And through that, we have the word today and the message today. We have the message that Jesus gave when he came to us and when he preached in Galilee. We have those preserved in our manuscripts in the 5,600 odds that you can find for the center of the study of the New Testament manuscripts online. We have these, they're available to the public. We have 4K uh, photographs of them, of the original manuscripts, as, I say original, of the manuscripts that have been copies from the original. No one has the original. Muslims don't have Uthman's original. Christians don't have the original ones of John. We don't have that because it's written on papyrus, and papyrus decays. But Muslims would have had it written on parchment. Parchment shouldn't have decayed that easy, especially if you're an owner and a king, and you have a caliphate. A caliphate should be able to protect the Quran. So why do we not have the originals? It's a very good question that Muslims won't be able to give an answer for. So for us, we have confidence that the message has been preserved for the prophets. Namely, that ever since the time of Adam and Eve, there have been prophets that have spoken the message of God, inspired through the Holy Spirit, that that message has been preserved. Right. That Christ came down for us, not as a mere human, but the divinity incarnate in the fullness of flesh. He lived among us, lived a sinless life, was born of a virgin. Some of these things, even the Quran says are true, which is interesting because it makes you wonder where they got it from. But we know this message has been preserved. The earliest manuscripts are the Christian manuscripts. They are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the earliest. We have them recorded so we can have faith in our scriptures. Right. So don't be led astray. Yeah. Have confidence that the message has been preserved. Yeah. Our manuscript history is, bo is bold and full and rich. Listen to Daniel, uh, Daniel, um, 
Rubeka. No, 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 that's, that's for Islam. Uh, the, oh, you'll do listen to him as well. Uh, uh, Daniel Wallace. Daniel Wallace, Daniel Wallace yeah. is a expert on New Testament yeah. historicity. He is one of the founders of the Centre for the Study of New Testament Manuscripts. You can go on their website yeah. and you can see them. And you can even order them by date and look at the earliest we have. Oh, it is an amazing stuff. Yeah. Check that out, Christians. This should be faith affirming and faith building. We've, uh, Christians don't make manufactured lies about their scripture. We have always spoken the truth about what we believe. But Muslims can't have that view. Muslims have to believe that what they have written on the hearts of Muslims is the same as what is in Kalam Allah, Umm al Khattab, the mother of the book. But there is no reason to believe that. Obviously, Uthman interceded. Obviously, Abu Bakr, Zayb and Tabit interceded. Ibn Mujahid, hundreds of years after that, interceded. And there's another guy. So there, there are tons of places where the Quran goes through a copy process. The Bible was much organic. It wasn't a, a council to decide what was in the Bible, but rather we knew this because the early church was the authority given from Christ to know what was scripture and what was not scripture. That's why we reject the Gospel of Thomas. That's why we reject all of these obvious forgeries, so on and so forth. One second. Good to see you, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so come to Jesus. We have answers, we have honesty, scholarship, integrity, and the earliest manuscripts. Right. If you want to know what Isa said, yeah. then come to Christianity. Amen. You won't know 600 years later from Muhammad in a cave. You won't know that. God bless you all.